you're all joining us here today. So let's go through. We've got six new cases. We've got one overseas acquired detected in hotel quarantine. We've got three overseas acquired detected on a marine vessel. And we have two under investigation, but they are not considered a major risk. And Dr Young will go through these in a bit more detail at the moment. Both are truck drivers. Both were detected by New South Wales uh, lab, but they have essentially um, not been uh, to many places at all. They've mainly been with their family. We will be putting up some exposure sites uh, later on today. There will be um, some exposure sites. I think they stopped for one, one of them stopped for fuel in St George and Boulogne. So we'll we'll go through and um, put those exposure sites up for people to have a look at. But uh, we are not overly concerned about these two. Uh, in good news, we've got only 758 people left in home quarantine, 41 active cases, 8,378 tests in the past 24 hours. Remember, if you have any symptoms please go and get tested. And they're great testing numbers for the, the fact that we don't have an outbreak and people are still going and getting tested. Uh, that's a very, very good result. And uh, yesterday, over 15,200 vaccines were delivered by Queensland Health. Now, we're also putting a big uh, call out to Queenslanders, uh, especially in the southeast. Uh, if you want to get your vaccine to please uh, register, we're going to have some vacancies uh, coming up soon. And of course, we know that we want to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Uh, yesterday, we were out at Woolworths, uh, the, one of the largest uh, depots in the Southern Hemisphere, talking about how we're going to be taking our uh, supplies out to those hubs out there to make sure we get the workers vaccinated. But now is the time, Queensland. So if you haven't put your name down, please put your name down or go and see your GP. That is really, really important. Okay, and then uh, before I hand over to Dr Young, I just want to mention um, some other good news, and that is um, we've had uh, confirmation that uh, Disney will be filming a, uh, a new um, production here on the Gold Coast. It will be about $100 million into the Queensland economy. It will be called Nautilus. About 240 jobs for cast and crew, 350 jobs for extras. And also, too, I can confirm that Netflix will film a 10-part drama called Irre Irrelevant at Mission Beach later this year. So that's fantastic to see our screen um, opening up in far north Queensland. And for rugby fans, we have secured the remainder of the 2021 Rugby Championships for Queensland. So that's, of course, um, good news. They'll be played at Seabus Stadium. It'll be played at Suncorp and the Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville from September the 12th until October the 2nd. So that's the Wallabies, the All Blacks, the Springboks and Puma from Argentina. So that's some good news for rugby fans. So I'll hand over to Dr Young. Thanks. Thank you, Premier. Yes, so two new cases are acquired in the community and we were notified about all about the two cases late yesterday by New South Wales. So these were two truck drivers who were tested as part of this surveillance program that we've got in place in Australia now. So truck drivers need to be tested every seven days. And these two truck drivers were superb. They did their routine testing and extra testing and they maintained um, social distancing at all times. They stayed at home when they weren't um, driving their trucks. So I think the risk is very low. We have subsequently retested both of those truck drivers and they've come back negative. So we're just working with New South Wales what it actually means about those two positive tests and working out um, what we need to do going forward. But while we work that through, their family, thank you very much to both households, will now be in quarantine. They'll get tested and they'll be in quarantine for 14 days unless we determine that there is no risk. There, they also travelled back into Queensland through the border and stopped at various places, of course, to get fuel and so forth, and one stayed overnight in St George. So we will be putting up a number of exposure sites. So we'll be asking people, please, to check those exposure sites and if they've been there during that relevant period to get tested and follow the public health advice. That's very, very important. But I thank these two 
truck drivers, and I thank all of the truck drivers who are out there going around Australia moving our necessities, food, fuel, goods through the country and then following very rigid processes, and they are doing it absolutely brilliantly. Now, we don't know where our next case might end up. One of these two actually lives in the Somerset region. The other lives in Sunshine Coast. I'm not concerned about the risks in those communities because these two truck drivers did everything they should do. But it's a point that we could have a case turn up anywhere. So please, to all Queenslanders, please come and get vaccinated. It's really, really important. I don't want to be standing up here when we've got an outbreak saying now's the time to get vaccinated because that's too late. You want to be vaccinated before you get the outbreak so that you protect yourselves, your families and your communities before the risk arrives. It's too late to only do it once we've got a virus circulating. So it's really, really important, everyone, if you haven't already had your first dose and you are 16 years of age or older, now is the time to either register or to go and see your GP or a pharmacy and to get vaccinated. Thank you. So we cannot emphasise enough that we want people coming out and getting vaccinated. <clears throat> we are seeing uh, people pouring into those vaccination centres in Victoria and New South Wales because they've got massive outbreaks. And in fact, combined, uh, ACT Victoria and New South Wales now has over 13,600 cases associated with that single Sydney cluster that started with one person on the 16th of June. So we cannot wait. Please, I know that we're doing so well in Queensland, uh, but don't wait until we have an outbreak here to realise that you need to protect yourself and your loved ones. Go out and get vaccinated now. We have a lot more vaccine coming into the state every single week now, and that will only continue to grow as we move forward to October, November and the end of the year. We are seeing our registration numbers dropping every day. Now, that shows that we are getting the vaccine into arms. So that's terrific. But if you're not registered, you can't book in. So we need people to get registered to make sure that when we have booking slots, and there's a lot more opening up in the next four weeks, uh, that we can offer you a booking. So please don't wait. Of course, if you're in the regions, if you're elsewhere around Queensland, come forward and get vaccinated. Because as you've just heard about these two drivers and what we know is happening at New South Wales and on the border there, that this could happen in any town in Queensland. This is not a South East Queensland issue. Uh, this is a Queensland issue. This is Queensland at risk and every single community has to do their part. And I ask leaders in every one of our communities, show leadership, step up, get vaccinated and call on your community to get vaccinated because we don't want to see us hit those targets only in South East Queensland and have all these vulnerable communities elsewhere in the regions. Everyone has to hit that target. We want everyone um, being vaccinated. Uh, thank you to these drivers for doing the right thing. We do want to say to anyone who works across borders, come forward and get vaccinated. You are more at risk than anyone else because you are travelling through those states. We know you do so to keep our economy open, but you're also putting yourself at risk. So please come forward and get vaccinated. And can I give a shout out to our 16 Queensland Health run aged care facilities. Uh, as you know, that deadline is coming up as far as mandatory vaccinations. And we now have over 82% 82, 82 of our aged care workers in our 16 state run uh, facilities now have had their first dose. So that is fantastic and we continue to see those people coming forward and getting vaccinated. Again, if you have any symptoms whatsoever, keep coming forward and getting tested. Uh, it is absolutely critical. And of course, uh, particularly in our 11 LGAs, remember that our restrictions are still in place till 4 p.m. this Friday. So keep doing the right thing, wearing your masks, social distancing, uh, and making sure that you're complying with those other rules around household numbers and other restrictions. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'll just comment initially on 
some of the movements across the borders in terms of vehicles and then some of the comments about people hopping across our borders. Uh, so we intercepted uh, 5,000 vehicles overnight and that is a combination of both heavy vehicles as well as vehicles. Of that, uh, 199 were refused entry into Queensland and 17 of those were obviously essential workers that were not yet vaccinated. Remember there is two reasons to cross the border, those with exemptions and essential workers that are vaccinated. I want to comment on people hopping across the border as has been seen in the last few days. Uh, this is uh, obviously terribly disappointing and it's always that small proportion of the community that sometimes makes this incredibly difficult. I ask that the community works with us. If we don't intercept you at the point of view hopping across the border, we will be following up on that. There is hefty fines involved in this. ADF will come along to support us in the next few days, another additional 120 people, and I thank the ADF for that. We have an amazing working relationship and they are already assisting us in the quarantine hotels. We will put more police on the border to stop this from happening into the future. But I ask that the community cooperates and be compliant, and that has been absolutely amazing to date. But unfortunately, we always have this minority that makes it incredibly difficult, not only for police, but also the community as well. But action will be taken on those that are constantly hopping across the border. And I ask that the community, as they are, to continually report on that as well. Thank you. Questions? Premier, in terms of the, Doherty, the new yeah. Doherty modelling on Friday, how are you expecting that to influence Premiers and is there a possibility that you could withdraw your agreement on the first plan? Uh, what we said very clearly, in fact, it was the Prime Minister's suggestion that he would commission further modelling. So I'm looking forward to seeing that modelling. I haven't seen the updated modelling. Um, and of course, uh, all Premiers and First Ministers will look at that in detail. So is there a possibility then that you might withdraw? I haven't seen anything yet. We've, we've all agreed that 70 and 80 per cent are targets for vaccination rates. Nothing's changed there. Personally, in Queensland, I like to see more people than 80 per cent get vaccinated. I think we should be, we should be you know, encouraging as many people as possible. But every single uh, person who's eligible for a vaccine must be offered a vaccine as well. You said this morning we've got to get out of the cave and live in the COVID world. What, do you agree with that? Well, I'll just say this to you. Ha have a look out in Queensland at the moment. You can go to work, you can go to school, you can go watch sport, you can play community sport, you can go to a restaurant, you can go out. Um, we haven't given up. I mean, we come out here every day and Queenslanders are doing such a good job in making sure that when we go hard and, and go fast, people abide by what we're asking them to do. And, and look where we're living. I mean. You know, I think we've got to be a bit, bit realistic here as well, that um, we are in a unique position. Um, and if you think about it, uh, Victoria has got under their past outbreaks. And I don't think the people in New South Wales want to give up about getting on top of their current outbreak. Do Queenslanders be booking interstate Christmas holidays? Well, I can't answer that. Well, at the moment, the borders are shut. And, you know, we don't know when they're going to come out of their current outbreak. Well, on that, on the film productions that you just announced, if the border is as it is, I think one of those is the end of the year where it starts filming. Will you limit the number of their workers allowed across the border? Uh, we have workers here in Queensland that work on these productions. Will any cross the border? Sorry? Will any cross the border? I doubt it because we've got a huge um, supply of people here. We've actually set up a permanent industry here in Queensland. Actors, extras? Sorry? Key actors, extras, will you put limits on them crossing the border? Well, I haven't seen the list, but most of the most of the production company and teams are actually established here in Queensland. We've actually actually set up our own industry here. We don't rely on other industries. For businesses and residents, what sort of reassurance can you give them? Like on Friday, will we know? Will we be heading towards those targets of 70 to 80 per cent? Well, I haven't seen the modelling. So, you know, apparently the Prime Minister's seen the modelling. Share it with us. You know, don't just drop it on the Friday morning. How about send it out now so we can all have a look at it? He's indicated, Premier, that it doesn't impact on essentially what will happen. Uh, I mean, are you worried about how hospitals here will cope, for instance, if you've got more 
I think That's everyone's right, worried David. about the impact it has on hospitals. I mean, we're seeing um, large numbers of uh, people uh, presenting with serious illness, um, dying in hospitals. Um, you know, hospitals are going to be stretched. We've seen the examples of around the world. Uh, we know at the moment the US is experiencing the pandemic of the unvaccinated. So can I just say to Queenslanders, now is the time to go and get vaccinated. Now is the time to go and get vaccinated because you are more at risk if the Delta strain comes here and you are unvaccinated. Um, then, of course, the next stage is to vaccinate our high school students. So we'll be probably be discussing that on Friday as well. Dad Jones and Jackie Trad, they were two of the most senior ministers in your previous term of government. They've now gotten jobs as <coughs> consultants or advocates based on their pretty successful political careers. How do you ensure they're not given special access to government? Well, they won't be, and that's that's a matter for them to make sure they have all the integrity advice. They, that's, the integrity commissioner continues to provide that advice to people. Do you think that advice should be made public? No, because the integrity commissioner gives the direct advice to them. It's, it's the person. And how can the public be confident that this dodgy is going on if that advice isn't made public? Well, there has to be a conflict first. So, what's the conflict? Well, I'm not going to put out hypotheticals. I just well, you're asking me a hypothetical. So. You know, if there is a perceived conflict of interest, they need to get that integrity advice. But I haven't seen anything that either of them are doing that 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 would stand in conflict of a job they did years ago. What about lobbyists that were working for you during the election campaign? Don't you think that advice should have been made public? Um, well, in relation to that, um, we've got a review happening at the moment. And what steps are being taken under the um, post-employment separation? Provisions, particularly that two-year quarantine period where department staff can't have contact with former senior government ministers. How do you ensure that's? Well, I'll get that information from the Director General. She would monitor that. Premier, yeah. are you concerned about truckies on the border striking or having a blockade? Uh, is this in relation to the the borders or? Yeah, on the, on the borders they're going to. But, like... but they can come through. Like, I mean, the freight has to be distributed around the country. There's a national freight protocol in place that um, that national cabinet has endorsed, so I don't understand what the issue would be. The freight is allowed to move. Yeah, I think yeah, someone's yeah. threatening to block the border and pull up their trucks and block the well, border next week. Well, all I say to you is have a look at the number of cases in New South Wales, and Queenslanders don't want to see those case numbers come into Queensland. So that is why there is a border closure. And there's a border closure between Western Australia and New South Wales and South Australia and New South Wales. And I think every other state and territory has got a border closure with New South Wales because of the current outbreak. And if you remember, we did exactly the same thing when Victoria had that outbreak and they got on top of their outbreak and then we reopened up. So I don't understand what the, what the issues are at the moment when it's, it's basically where we've been before. And once states get on top of their outbreaks, then they're opened up. The leaders in the tweet are hoping to come out of lockdown this Saturday when is due for the statewide lockdown. If that happens, will you reinstate that border bubble with the tweet or is it too far gone? Uh, look, we said we were very happy to have that border bubble. I wrote to the Premier uh, suggesting an easier um, point of a checkpoint and they rejected it. So they're New South Wales residents, they're not Queensland residents. Would that require the border to, or the checkpoints to go south if and on its own and I don't think they have an appetite to do it, so let, let's see what, what, what decisions they make. Can I just clarify, sorry, you mentioned a review to Lydia. What was that about? Sorry? You mentioned a review was underway regarding... There's the, the, the review stuff. happening of uh, lobbyists. The triple C review? No, 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 the one that... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there a vaccination plan for 12-year-olds yet, 12 to 16 year olds No, no, except if you are in that age group and you have underlying health conditions, then that's a priority group to get vaccinated. Are you buying for the AFL grand final? No. Why not? Sorry? Why? Well, I think we've got enough sport here at the moment. I think everything's OK, so um, I don't think we can do everything. Let Western Australia have one, hey? <laughs> I guess just last year there was such a push to be yeah. you know, the saviour of the AFL and they said, you know, they could call you at any time. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and look, I just... And I've... I've um, Spoken at the AF, with the AFL, we were very happy to uh, host that last year, and you know um, I'm quite sure that they'll be uh, speaking to other states about uh, possibilities of where that can be. Yeah. Ask the chief health officer. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Please. Just get my head around.
around it. You mentioned the two truck drivers. Had they tested in negative? Yeah. So they tested positive in New South Wales, both of them, and New South Wales let us know that late yesterday. And then subsequently we've tested them in Queensland and they've both tested negative. Now that could mean all sorts of things, so we just have to work that through. Dr. Right. Now, quickly, the out west, Mum and Dad, there's some reports this morning. Does everyone have access to the Queensland hospital there from south of the border, including for vaccinations, or yes. is it our people being involved? Mm -hmm. No, no, um, anyone in the border zone, but only the border zone, it's quite a big border zone, can cross into Queensland for a vaccination. It's really important that we get as many people across the border, both sides, vaccinated. So that can occur. And then, of course, anyone can access healthcare in Queensland as long as they've got an appointment. So that's why they're coming to Queensland. They can't say, I want to go and do something. They just have to have an appointment and then they can come across. And of course, anyone can cross the border in an emergency. So in an ambulance, aeroplane, helicopter, they can access urgent health care. Do the new cases today threaten the plans to ease restrictions on Friday at all? No, no. I need to get more information from New South Wales about the two cases, but even if they are confirmed as positive, then I'm quite comfortable with the steps we've already taken to isolate anyone who's at risk. So we will put out some exposure sites and I'd like people to look at those and if they were there to get tested, but I think it's in hand. I think it's under control. So those restrictions on Friday, is that moving from four square metres to two square metres of doors? Yeah. yeah, it's the restrictions that we have for the rest of the state at the moment, so everyone can see what they are. The one thing I do want to turn my mind to between now and Friday, and depending where we are, is masks, because we know how essential they've been. So we just might need to look at um, whether there needs to be an extended period for, for some mask wearing. And what, Premier, sorry, on the Fraser Island bushfire, yeah. um, does it concern you that there was emails with top bureaucrats that looked to be watering down public messages during that disaster? Yes, I got briefed on that yesterday and uh, that is concerning and my understanding is that um, uh, that the person involved is being spoken to and they should never have um, stopped putting out um, messaging. Yep. Have they been stood down from their position? Not to my understanding. And can you assure Queenslanders that won't happen again? Oh, well, absolutely. We'll make sure that the department issues a directive um, to everyone to make sure that doesn't happen. Do you think bureaucrats were more concerned about public relations than the fire? Um, I think they were probably concerned about the island of itself and the fact that, um, you know, what would happen to not just Christmas bookings but forward bookings. So I just think it was just someone who had a bit of an... Um, uh, it, who just didn't really take the course of action they should have um, at that time. When you said they were spoken to, was that by the environment? My understanding is, is by the department, yeah. Can you say what planning is underway for the relaxation of restrictions for lockdown at 70 and 80 per cent, or is that on hold pending the new Doherty model? Um, I don't have it here with me, but it's publicly listed about what happens at 70 per cent, what happens at 80 per cent. And um, what it says at 80 per cent is it does say that there still will be some options to have um, some restrictions and some and some lockdowns. So, as I've said time and time again, that may be specific localities or specific regions. Um, so that is nothing new. It's all in there, but that was all predicated on 30 cases across Australia. Not is it 9,000 cases? 13,000. 13, there we are. 13,000. So I'm looking forward to seeing that modelling. If the Prime Minister can get that modelling as quick as he possibly can and get it out to the Premier so we can read it not on the Friday morning when we get into the National Cabinet, I think we'll all be better for it. Premier, the um, Prime Minister said this morning lockdowns do more harm than good. I think lockdowns have a big impact on people. They have a big impact on families. They have an impact on people's mental health. I've spoken to small business owners at length as well. I understand what that does for their staff, for their turnovers, for their planning. I understand that. I get that. I understand the issues it's had on our airline industry, on a whole range of different things. Um, but the reality is we are in a pandemic and there's probably nowhere in the world yet that has the answer to how to deal with it. So what we can do is look and observe and see what's happening overseas and look at that best practice and incorporate that into our, our practices. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. I mean, when I was over in, in, in Tokyo, people could not believe that we have not had a wave, um, in, a significant wave in Queensland. 
Like they were just shocked about that because everywhere across the world is going through waves of the pandemic. So it's on us to look at that, that best evidence from around the world, but also to, to be, um, you know, listen to the, the health experts um, and make sure that we actually put in place a plan that is in the best interest of our citizens.